Hello everyone. Today we're going to learn about electromagnetic induction. This is an interesting chapter. This is a, a summary of what we're going to look at today. Uh, to understand the phenomenon of electromagnetic induction, which relates electronic and magnetic fields. They are together now. To calculate induced voltages and electron currents building Faraday's law, to understand how energy conservation manifests itself in electromagnetic induction, that magnetic fields store energy and how to calculate that energy, how circuit elements called inductors store and release magnetic energy in circuit, how changing magnetic field join electron charge as source of electric field. So these are the topics we're going to look at today. Let's get started. Okay, electromagnetic induction. Electromagnetic induction involves electronic effects, voltage and currents due to changing magnetic fields. So now, if there's a change in magnetic field, there will be currents and electron field. Simple experiments that result in induced current. So here's a magnet, and then here's a circuit, and it move magnet into a circuit. So here's magnet, and then move it closer to the circuit, then you get the current in the circuit. This is induced current. Um, if you move the magnet faster, there's a more electronic current. If you also move it away from the circuit, you get the current, also get the current, but in opposite direction, like this. And then also in opposite way, you fix the magnet here, and then move the circuit to a magnet, then you also get the current because magnetic field in this part of the current, the cathode circuit, is changing as a function of time. So we can look at this induced current here. So that's the electromagnetic induction. There are more examples here. Uh, number three example is energize one coil to make it an electromagnet, electromagnetic. So, so this if you have a current here, there will be uh, there will be a magnet, magnetic field here, right? If you remember the right hand wall, if the current is there, magnetic field this way, right? So it's this magnet was this electricity. Then if you move it towards another circuit, then there will be current in another circuit. Or 
if you can also take a similar to you fix this and if you move the circuit towards or away from the this magnet, induced magnet, then there will be a current too. The fourth example is change the current in one circuit and just the magnetic field it produces. Then if you change the magnetic field here, if you connect this circuit and there will be current and there's a magnetic field that's increasing and then there will be an induced current. In a similar way, by increasing the, by starting the current here, the magnetic field here is increasing it as a function of time, then if it's a variable magnetic field, then another circuit have a current induced. It's very similar to this. In this case, steady current, it gets closer, that's why magnetic field here is changing. In this case, it's not moving, but the, the current is changing, increasing, so the magnetic field is increasing, so that's why there's an induced magnet here. And there's a law to describe this phenomena that is called Faraday's law, which is written here. Um, uh, induction by reading the voltage induced in the circuit to the rate of the chain of magnetic flux through the circuit. So this is the relation of induction to the change of the magnetic field. So the voltage equals, this is how much change in the magnetic flux as a function of time. So this phi is magnetic flux that is defined by magnetic field times area and then integrated. If it's a flat area and a uniform magnetic field, then of course it's the magnetic field times area. And of course if there's an angle you need cosine theta. And that's decide, that decides magnetic field, magnetic flux. This flux can change by changing the field B. So you can, if you change this B of course, phi is going to change too, right? Or if you change the area, the flux also changes. Or the orientation, cosine theta, if you change the angle of the magnetic field, the magnetic flux also changes. That obvious from this equation, right? Um, for example, in this, let's look at this group. So magnet is moving uh, in this right way, then the magnetic field is going to increase. You know, the, if you move it closer, the magnetic flux here will be denser. So magnetic field will be stronger, larger. So magnetic flux will change. Then there will be induced current in this circuit. Moving a magnet near a wire loop increases the flux through the loop. The result is an induced voltage given by Faraday's so the induced voltage drives an induced current in the loop here. So this is the, the one of the most fundamental law in electromagnetics. We are looking at two examples, changing field. So uh, the first one is the loop has a radius R, so this has a radius R, resistance R, and it is in a magnetic field. Magnetic field is Drawn here with crosses um, perpendicular to the surface of the screen and it's changing at the rate of dvdt. So this magnetic field is changing. Then induced voltage is, so this is Faraday's rock, right? The voltage induced is a change in magnetic flux. Um, then magnetic flux is area times magnetic field, which is which is changing, area is not changing. Uh, magnetic flux, its magnetic field is changing, and the area is so also it's pi r square, and the changing rate is dvdt, and the induced current is current of course is voltage divided by the resistance, right? So this voltage divided by resistance is the current in this. So that's one example of using Faraday's law. Another example is changing area. So in this example, this, the circuit, magnetic field, 
and this bar of the circuit is moving this way. So in this case, area is changing. So the bus lies on the conducting rails increasing the circuit area at the rate. So the rate of the area change is this velocity, so velocity B, um, which is this area of the, okay so area is L but this is length L uh, then this velocity is B so or D X D T so L B is area so L times B velocity is going to change so it is the voltage it's Faraday's according to Faraday's law the voltage is known in flux as divided by as a function of 10 times so minus B, in this case, magnetic field is constant, right? But area is changed, D and D, T. And then area change rate is LB, so LB. So B, LB is a voltage. What's the induced current? Current, of course, voltage divided by resistance. So B, L, B, R, B, L, B divided by R is the induced current in this case. Okay, the the, how do we know the direction of the induced current? This is, then in this case, length law is useful. The direction of induced current, the voltage and current is described by the minus sign in Faraday's law. So, um, if we go back, so this is Faraday's law, right? And there's a minus sign, right? So this decides which direction is the voltage of current or current. But it's an easier way. Easier way is um, using the lens law. But it's easier to get the direction from conservation of energy, lens law. The direction of the induced current must be such as to oppose that change that gives rise to it. Otherwise, we could produce energy without doing any work that doesn't make sense. So, what does it mean? Let's look at an example. Here, the North Pole of the magnetic approaches the loop. Here, North Pole of the magnet approaches the loop. So there will be induced current here, right? But induced current turns the loop into a magnet towards north to the left, opposing the approaching magnet. So if this north is approaching, then this induced current is it's going to flow to stop this motion. So they want the map this circuit want this north pole against north pole so that it stop. That means using this right hand wall it's opposed north is this way, right? So the current should go this way. Always it's going to try to stop the the movement. That's why you need to um, push it. You need to do work to, to move it closer to the circuit and then because there's a work there's a big current there will be current in the other way the lens law says that induced effects oppose the changes that gives rise to them so now let's look at another example the induced current goes the opposite way so now the nose pole is going away from the circuit they're making the loop south pole to the left and avoiding the withdrawal of the magnet. So then in case, then at, again, let's low sets oppose the changes. So if north is going away, we want south here, right? So that's why we want south here. So from the right hand rule, the south is here, north is this way, so the current goes this way. So that's how it works. Okay. Next, electric generators. We look at this and then electric generators. Well, actually, we look at as an electric model. If you have a, a current, then you can make the work with this kind of electric model. Electric model can be a generator if you make, if you rotate it by hand or by force and this use the energy, our electricity produced now. So electric generators use a rotating coil, something like this, in a magnetic 
field is a magnetic field from north, north to south, convert mechanical to electronic energy. Here's the orientation sphere that's changing to produce the changing magnetic flux. Remember, in a, in a uh, magnetic flux can be also changing the angle, right, of the magnetic field. Then so makes it hard to turn it down and cut that supply of electronic energy. That's why we have to burn fuels or use energy or water or wind to generate electricity. So, of, so if you rotate this, then magnetic flux is changing. So there will be current in the circuit, right? And then that you can use it as electricity. So that's why it's generated. But as you move this, the length slow says there's a, um, the current is going to run to oppose the, the change. So it actually it, you need the power and you need to make work to move this change angle in the magnetic field. So that energy is going to be changed into the electronic energy. So it's not easy to move this, you need to work, do work to make it rotate. That's why maybe um, have you used a uh, bicycle type generator, you need to pedal to make electricity, to lead a light above or something, then you need to pedal harder, right? Then that's how, because you're producing electricity, so you need to do work. Uh, opposing to the magnetic field, or opposing to the change according to the lens law. Okay, the other use for example of induction. Electromagnetic induction is used to retrieve information stored magnetically on audio and video tapes and credit cards. Um, so, for example, here, this is a credit card, right? And then magnetic strip. So, information is contained in magnetization panel. So there's a magnetic field here. And then uh, we'll step some information, maybe name, birthday, how much money I have, it's stored here, right? And then you move a circuit, something like this. When you swipe the card, shocker, swipe the card, there's, there will be current here, according to the change in the magnetic field. So that's what you get, that's how you get the information at uh, current or electricity from this car. That's how the um, credit card works. And in all times, if you remember, audio or video tapes, magnetic tapes, also worked in this way. So in the tape, has a magnetic in field, and then if you swipe the head and the circuit, it's a circuit, and then there will be induced current on the head. And then that's how you return the information on, on, about the, the music or the video. Okay. And then eddy current. Eddy current is interesting. Eddy current is produced by induction in moving conductors and act a kind of electromagnetic friction. This may be a nuisance, sapping energy, or it can be used to provide electromagnetic braking or spinning machinery. Any current spray an important role in metal detectors. So, um, for example, in this about top example, so here's the two coils, and if you increase the, or decrease the current, change the current here, then there will be magnetic field that is changing, so there will be induced current according to Faraday's law in here. But if something something like in this case conductor is in between these two and then there will be there's a this is conductor so there will be current is going to be induced here too and then so that's why the energy is a little bit lost here and then that's why the current is weaker than here if there's nothing all the energy goes here right all the magnetic goes here all the current goes here but because if something in between, then some currents will go here, induced here, that's called eddy currents, and so there will be less currents are induced here. So this is a problem 
for example, if in a computer or, or some cell phones there are thousands of circuits, so if there's a little bit of wire or circuit, something, and there's an induced current, eddy current, they, it's a problem. You lose energy and information there. But eddy currents can also be used in a useful way, for example, in a, as a metal detector in the airport. So if you go to airport, you have to go through the metal detector, right? You do it like this, and then they check if I have a metal or something. If I have a belt, then they, the machine is going to ring like a blah, 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 right? Uh, that's using eddy current. So this is a good case. So say, suppose this is a, a belt or metal. Then in this airport, you go inside, and then they try to use a current, and if there's a Less current, that means some something metal is on your body, for example, buckle of the belt, have any current, that's why current is less, so that's how they detect, oh, you have metal, so you need to get rid of that, so that's how, how do they do it in the airport. Also, um, for example, something rotating, you have uh, maybe chainsaw rotating metal, or the train's wheel, train's wheel is, is metal, right? And then they're rotating first, very fast. And then, okay, you want to uh, stop it. Then you can try to induce the eddy current. Then, because energy is lost here quickly, then um, you can stop the uh, wheel, for example. If if it's a train wheel, you can um, you you, will, you can use use eddy current as a brake. Even though you know train wheel is, is rotating very fast, then you, if you can induce eddy current, then you can quickly break it without touching it, right? Because this is just induced one, so you don't need to touch it. That's um, safe way to stop fast. Moving train. Okay. Hmm. So, how do you do it? You, you turn on the electromagnet, electromagnet nearby one, then resulting eddy currents. So, if there's an electromagnetic and this first radiating coil inside that, there's the eddy current and then quickly energy is going to be this. Okay, let's move on to inductance. Mutual inductance occurs when a change in current in one circuit results via changing magnetic flux in an induced voltage and thus a current in adjacent current. So if you change the magnetic field here, there will be a change in magnetic field here, so the current is produced here, right? Mutual inductance occurs because some of the magnetic Thus, produced by one circuit passes through the other circuit. So, and here in this example, um, one circuit in changing on um, current. So, here's a current, but it's a magnetic field. And then you change the current, then magnetic field changes, right? But some of the magnetic flux field is going through the other circuit. Then if you change the magnetic field here, magnetic field here also changes. So that's why resulting current will be here. So by changing the current here, the current here also changes. So that's mutual inductance. And self-inductance occurs when change in current in the circuit result in an induced voltage that opposes the change in the circuit itself. Self-inductance occurs because some of the when it flux produced in the circuit passes through that same circuit. So in this case, this is an example. Um, so this there's a current, right? And the magnetic field is going here. And then some of the magnetic field are going through the, the circuit itself. So if when you change the current, then that also induces the voltage to oppose the change in the circuit itself. So that's called self-inductance. Okay. I think
and there's an example here, self-inductance. Self-inductance L of a circuit is defined as a ratio of the magnetic flux through the circuit to the current in the circuit. So self-inductance L is magnetic flux divided by the current. So that's the definition. And if you differentiate it, it d phi dt equals L di dt because current is the one changing. SI unit of L are in Tesla uh, square meter divided by ampere. Oh, Henry is the unit. By Faraday's law, the voltage across the inductor is voltage is minus dl di dt because the voltage is change of the magnetic flux, right? That is equal to this, so it's going to here and then also minus. The minus sign shows that the direction of the inductor voltage is such that it oppose the change in the inductor itself. So voltage increasing across inductor in the direction of current defines positive voltage. So the voltage is positive when current is decreasing. So it's when the current is decreasing, the voltage try to increase the current to oppose the change. Self inductance of a solenoid, let's look at this example. Let's consider a long solenoid. Solenoid is a circuit of many, many turns, right? Of cross section area A, so the area is A. And length is L. Length is L with N turns, N turns here. The magnetic field inside the solenoid is here, this we've learned before, B equals mu zero N R. With N times per unit length, the solenoid contains a total of n times l times, so n is the unit times, and then length is l, so n times l. So the flux through the time is flux is um, magnetic field times area is a flux, and then how many times? This n l times, so n l b a, and then b is here mu zero n i, so b is replaced by this, and then it becomes mu zero n squared i a n. The self-induction of the solenoid is I equals phi divided i, right? So phi divided i, self-induction is mu zero n squared a n. So that's the example of the solenoid. Inductors in circuits, how this induct these inductors are working circuits. Inductors, by the way, are sometimes um, called coil. This will be winding. The equation of this voltage is minus delta d t shows that the current through an inductor cannot change in instantaneously. Otherwise, the uh, impossible inferent yeah, voltage will develop. Because this is a current, this is a current change, right? So if this instantaneous change, if this is going to be infinite, so voltage is going to be infinite, that's not going to happen. Rapid changes in the current result in a large possible dangerous voltage. So if you change the current quickly, the voltage was very large. This equation is the same. After the switch is closed in the circuit, like this below, the voltage across in the, in the decreases from E0 to 0 as the voltage across the resistor increases from zero to E0. So let's look at this example. So there's a battery voltage and resistance here, and a coil is here, inductor is here. And the switch is open at the beginning, so no current is flowing. But if you immediately after close the switch, there's still no current because right now it's uh, closed. But DI DT is very large, right? At the beginning, this battery try to make the current flow. So that means the DT is very large. So there will be inductors voltage equal to the battery's voltage. So because of this, the the coil have an equal amount of voltage, but in opposite sign. 
with this. Okay, it's opposing right? man's law. And after a long line, long time, this current goes through, right? The rate of the change of the current and that the both approaches. Set. So after a long time, the current becomes stable and this is going to be zero. Then there will be no voltage in the in the, in the, in the inductor. So it becomes like a, a, just a wire with no resistor. So this solenoid just becomes wire if this, the current is stable and no change, there's no voltage, so it just becomes a simple wire. But it takes time from here to here because at the beginning the coil is opposing to the increasing current. Um, in terms of time, the inductive time constant. The loop law for RL, so this is resistance and then um, uh, inductor L, circuit so with something like this. E0, this is a voltage, and minus R, this is resistance, the voltage in the resistance, and the voltage in the inductor, and then of course this is one circuit, so if you add everything, it has to be zero. And then uh, for voltage of oh, the inductor is via dt, so the solution to the differential equation, so you solve this, then current is going in this form, E divided R, but my 1 minus R minus RT divided by L. So this is solution integrated in this here. The inductor, so that means uh, it's uh, this kind of couple. The current is at the beginning when you close the circuit, something like this, on L circuit. The current is zero at the beginning, but exponentially increases toward the um, this part, E zero divided on, and it will be stable there. On the other side, on the other hand, the voltage of the um, inductor is at the beginning, it's equal to E zero, but as the current becomes stable, it approaches zero. And then, remember, this becomes a wire, right? The induct in inductor's current starts at zero and then builds up with a time constant. So time constant is this part. So L divided on. So this is a unit time. Um, as the current increases, its rate of change decreases. So that increases, the, it's stable, right? The inductor both therefore decays exponentially to zero, so this curve. This decay has the same time constant R because it's the opposite of this, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's look at it again in this figure. So the battery stays constant and to surprise the uh, E zero voltage. And the current try to increase at the beginning, so the resistor voltage R is going to increasing. And then current R increases, then the um, voltage here at the at the change in the current result in a change in the voltage. Voltage decreases with decreasing rate of current change. So at the beginning, voltage here of the inductor is highest because the change of the rate of the current is highest, but as the current is stable, this becomes like a wire. Okay, let's look at short and long-term behavior of inductors. Since its current can change instantaneously, the inductor in R and circuit shown carries no current just after the switch is closed, and so it briefly acts like an open circuit. So, at the moment when it, you close the circuit, then you close the circuit, right? Then at the moment, there's a, uh, no current. So, so it looks like an open current. So this solenoid uh, or inductor, there's no current here. And then it looks like an open wire, like open. So the, all the current, go this way and then nothing is going to this way so it looks like a just resistance after a long time inductor current stops changing so after a long time inductor's current 
it's going to um inductor after long time the inductor current stop changing. Therefore inductor voltage is going to be zero, so inductor acts like an ordinary wire. So at the beginning, at the very first moment there's no current here, but later there will be no change in the current, so it's just open wire. So it's all the current go this way, and then R2 there'll be uh, no current. All the currents are here. Uh, when switch is again open, the inductor creates a voltage that prevents the current from instantaneously stopping. So when you open this again, the, the inductor try to oppose the change, right? So try to produce the current. And then there will be some current. It acts like a battery and then try to throw the same amount of uh, current through up to all the circuits. Interesting. What about magnetic energy? As current builds up in an inductor, the inductor absorbs energy from the circuit. The energy is stored in the inductor's magnetic field. The rate at which the inductor stores energy is P. It's described this way. The reason we can look at it is, if you think about on a circuit like this, then we learn that the voltage of the battery resistance and inductor is add up to zero, right? Because it's a circuit. Then if you multiply current I, then it becomes a unit of energy, because voltage times current is energy, right? Energy of the battery. And I R I square R is the energy in resistance. And then this L I D I D T is energy in the inductor. So the energy in the inductor is this one, L I D I D T. Then, ah, sorry, this is the rate at which inductor stores energy because this is differential. So for an inductor, the stored total energy is U, it's integrate this P, this one you integrate. Then you integrate L I D I, so one half L I squared. This is the total energy stored on the inductor. Considering a uniform magnetic field inside a solenoid shows that magnetic energy density is something like this. And this is a universal expression. Wherever there is a magnetic field, there is energy or density of V squared divided by Okay, induced electronic field. The induced voltage in a circuit subject to changing magnetic flux result from induced electronic field. Induced electronic field result from a change in magnetic flux. This is determined by the full form of the Faraday's law, one of the four fundamental laws of electromagnetic magnetism. So here the well integral is taken on um, any closed loop, so the closed loop and integrate electron field, then flux is through that loop and then that change is equal to the integration of the electron field along that. The equation states that change in magnetic field here produces an electronic field. So magnetic if you change the magnetic field, electronic field is created. Thus, not only charges but also changing magnetic field can create an electronic field. Unlike the electronic field of a static charge, the induced electronic field is not conservative. So here's the pictures. So static electronic field, we look at it in previous lectures. So if there's a Q or charge Q, then electronic field is going away from that, right? Starting here, right? But induced electronic fields is closed loops. So if B is changing, uh, magnetic field is changing, then electronic field is induced, but it's in a closed loop, so that's different, right? So here's a summary of what we learned today. Faraday's law describes electromagnetic induction, most fundamentally the phenomenon whereby a change in magnetic field produces an electron field. Changing magnetic field produces electronic field, that's Faraday's law. 
This induced electronic field is non conservative and its field lines have no beginnings or endings around the circles in that example. Right? In the presence of circuit, the induced electronic field gives rise to an induced voltage and induced current. Then slow states the direction of the induced current and such that on a field it produces a opposed a change that gives rise to it. So it's easier to use this length slow to figure out which way the current is induced or voltage induced. Self-inductance is a circuit property whereby changing current in a circuit result in an induced voltage that opposes the change on my field strike energy equals the energy density of this square divided by kilometer. Okay, so that's all today. Uh, we we'll continue next week. See you next time.